the house was built in 1849 for a U.S. naval captain named Steedman, sometimes called the Steedman House. During the Civil War, it served as the headquarters for the Commissary General for Prisoners. And every president from the 1930s right up until 1999 when the club went out of business spent some time here. You know, it's got, it's got a lot of history. This is one of the challenge missions for all the uh, chefs that we have here. They all have to use Impossible Burger, which is a miracle burger, because as a guy famously addicted to uh, <laughs> the wrong foods, uh, once I had an Impossible Burger, I considered, oh, maybe I sh should adjust my diet. Impossible Foods makes meat directly from plants. So what we're able to do is take the cow out of the equation in, our, in the case of our first product, which is the ground beef uh, replica. It makes us able to make meat with huge, huge efficiencies, which have a great effect on the environment and that also actually uh, are healthier choices for people to eat. It's fun watching everyone else here try Impossible Foods for the first time and seeing their reaction to it. The dish I made tonight is inspired by this Jamaican restaurant chain called Golden Crust. We had to use Impossible Beef Burger Blend um, and I thought it'd be really good to do a beef patty. So it's a Jamaican Impossible Beef Patty uh, with a sweet yellow pepper sauce. Knowing where my food comes from, one, that's like a major thing and also utilizing pretty much uh, most of the food that is uh, produced in the restaurant. You know, making sure that we're not wasting things, we're not only cutting something for the perfect cut, and if we are, we're utilizing that in some sort of staff meal or a puree or something like that. Sustainability is extremely important, you know, we want to continue living on this earth. I think sustainability is the most important issue that we have around food. I think that trying to buy locally and support local farmers and really think about that is much more important than organics per se. Um, and it's thinking about the whole environmental impact of where food comes from. A third of all food grown in America is thrown out. Like literally if, you know, a whole cornfield raises up from the ground, just take a third of that and throw it away because that's how much food you throw out. So it, it's a huge, huge problem. I mean, there's over 13 million children that suffer from food insecurity in America. You know, that food can go to them. Food waste is really crucial. There's just so much food. I mean, there are a lot of hungry people still in the United States, and there's a lot of food that's wasted because it doesn't fit that perfect criteria of the perfect unblemished apple or carrot. We really need to find ways to uh, utilize those products in, in ways that, that make sense and uh, stop throwing away so much food. So I'm making a tostada tonight out of impossible meat, so it'll have a little bean puree, a crispy corn tortilla, a little salsa of avocado and finger limes, and micro cilantro. I'm more of an authentic Mexican cook, and so you wouldn't usually make tacos or tostadas out of ground meat. It would normally be like a braised meat. But the Impossible Meat works really well in this application and is quite delicious on this uh, completely plant-based tostada. I work with Impossible Foods and so I, I know the product quite intimately. It's all sort of ingredients that you would find out in, in the real world, it's real food. My founder, who is a really brilliant biochemist, uh, reverse engineered meat down to the molecular level and then went into the plant world and found the same molecules in plants which we were able to purify and then put back together. You've got textured vegetable protein, uh, in this case it's made out of wheat, and then there's coconut for the fat. Then it has heme, which is a proprietary ingredient, um, which is basically like plant blood. This is very, very different than a, a veggie burger. Um, it's not that at all. It really changes as it cooks, just like meat would. It caramelizes and you get all of those aromas and, um, you know, it's, it smells like, like ground beef. You'll see it in a lot more restaurants by the end of 2017. Tonight, with the Impossible Foods, I have cooked a Creole meatball. It's inspired by this Earth Day theme, so I called it the meatball at the end of the Impossible Rainbow. 
<laughs> so I have a barbecue sauce to represent the red, some smoked mashed yams for orange, yellow roasted pepper hot sauce, and then collard greens, and the blue is blue corn grits, and then there's a little violet pickled cabbage at the end. I think people should not take for granted that we're going to always have access to the food that we have. Um, I'm a big fan of using up everything, so you know every part of the animal, every part of the vegetable. You know we're dependent on a lot of natural resources that are not going to be available forever if we don't start watching this. Our world needs food, and the idea that we waste trillions of pounds of food, billions of dollars worth of food every year because we deem it unacceptable or imperfect um, is unacceptable. We're going to serve a lemon and strawberry vachron. So I did layers of a soy-based strawberry gelato and a lemon sorbet. And then we're going to throw a little yuzu macerated strawberry on that, some gorgeous berries and some yuzu foam. And then we made little crunchy kisses as well, made of aquafaba. So the cooking liquid from garbanzo beans, no salt, but whipped as meringue with a little cream of tartar, some sugar, and then we put in a homemade basil oil and some lemon zest and dried it out, and then you get a nice little plaque. In my opinion, food policy intersects with everything. Politics are, are changing the way that uh, changing the issues that we should be focusing on, and, and it's happening faster than we can really anticipate. The uh, elimination of a lot of environmental regulation is going to impact how food is grown, and um, certainly if there are vast deportations of, of immigrant community who um, produce food in this country, that's going to impact access to food. It doesn't really matter what party we represent, you know, the American people is what should be at best interest. and people that sometimes can't generally speak up for themselves usually get left by the wayside and those are the people that suffer the most. So many people do not know where their next meal is coming from and that's first and foremost that we need to be talking about in terms of food policy and making sure that we do not neglect programs that help these people. Education is going to be part of um, what we need to do, not just practice policy, but make sure that we're in the schools at a young age teaching children who might not find this out at home that this is the way you should be eating, local, sustainable, more fruits and vegetables, less processed foods. And that was clearly a value of the last administration. I'm not finding that it's one of this one so far. You know, we're just getting started. I'm sure you've heard the old Virginia Woolf quote that's, one cannot think well, love well, sleep well if one has not dined well.